careers are definitely done because you just shot a man for no reason. Five days after Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed by Atlanta police officer Garrett Rolfe, Paul Howard, the Fulton County District Attorney, announced an 11 count indictment against Rolfe, which includes felony murder. The possible sentences for a felony murder conviction would be life, life without parole, or the death penalty. According to District Attorney Howard, Rolf shot Rayshard Brooks twice in the back as he was running away with one of the bullets piercing his heart. And the distance that they are apart at that time was 18 feet 3 inches at the time that this shot was fired. So based upon uh, that information, uh, we have concluded that Mr. Brooks was running away at the time that the shot was fired. After shooting Brooks, Rolf allegedly said, I got him. And as this frame from one of the eight videos of the shooting shows, Rolf allegedly kicks Brooks as he was dying on the pavement. That the shot happened after the deployment of the taser where he started running again. Um, that you would kick another human being after you just put two bullets in his back. In another frame, the other officer, Devin Brosnan, is seen standing on Brooks' shoulders. He's facing three less serious charges. Uh, we asked uh, why did he stand on his arm, and he said something to the fact that he really didn't know what was going on, and he was trying to ensure that Mr. Uh, Brooks did not have a weapon. A combination of available video, including police body cameras, shows Officer Brosnan approach Rayshard Brooks, who's asleep in his car in an Atlanta Wendy's drive through line just after 10.40 p.m. What's up, my man? Hey. What's up, man? Hey. Officer Brosnan wakes Brooks up and asks him to move his car to a parking spot. A few minutes later, Officer Rolf is on the scene starting to question Brooks. Your Honor, I, I just got something to eat. I went to visit my mother's gravesite. I'm not causing any problems. Brooks is given a breathalyzer. Just take a deep breath in, put your mouth over the mouthpiece, go as hard as you can until I tell you to stop. Blah, 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 stop. The officers then give Brooks a number of other field sobriety tests, and at this point, Brooks is doing everything he's told to do. Asking if he can just walk home. I can walk home. Why would I don't you? have to, I don't have to park. Why would, park a jet. why would you walk home? I just don't want to be in violation of anybody. I can walk, my, my sister's house is right here. Then everything changes when the officers decide to take Brooks into custody. I think you've had too much to drink to be driving. Put your hands on your back for me. Here, put your hands on your back. Hey, hey, stop fighting. Stop fighting. As Brooks begins to fight, there's a struggle over Officer Brosnan's taser. You're going to get tased. Brooks wrestles the taser away and breaks free. Officer Rolf gives chase with his taser in his right hand, but then, watch, he switches the taser to his left and draws his gun. Meanwhile, Brooks, while running, turns back and fires the taser he took from Brosnan at Officer Rolf. Seconds later, Rolf fires his handgun and Brooks falls to the ground. Brooks was taken to the hospital but died during surgery. Thousands of people have taken part in days of protests in Atlanta, including the family of Rashard Brooks. Not only are we hurt, we are angry. When does it stop? We're not only pleading for justice, we're pleading for change. So a charge of felony murder, you're talking about the potential for the death penalty and the DA talked about that today. Let's bring Ted Rollins in. Uh, uh, Ted, as we listen to the district attorney today, um, I know he's not going to personally try the case because I know who's going to, um, but it sounded a lot like, a, like an opening statement there when he was announcing the charges. Yeah, he had visual aids trying to justify, I think, the charges because there are a lot of people that are skeptical of this decision. Uh, one of the things that he did was he didn't wait for a grand jury to bring his case to. He 
brought it. And he didn't wait for the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, the GBI. They ha- are conducting an investigation, but they haven't finished yet. So I think that's why he came to this press conference armed with facts, the facts that he says he used to make this decision. All right. So there are two officers there and both are facing charges. But uh, he took a lot of time during uh, the press conference today to point out that the other officer is going to be uh, cooperating. Let's take a listen to that. Well, he initially told us that uh, he thought that it was uh, the situation was well in hand and uh, the situation was calm. Uh, but he was not an experienced DUI lo- uh, investigator, so that's why he called Officer Roth in. Uh, he has indicated to us that he was somewhat surprised that it accelerated into an actual arrest uh, because he thought that the situation might have been resolved before then. So when he then decided to s- describe what happened uh, once the wrestling took place on the ground, uh, you could tell he became a lot more emotional. And that's when he said to us that he needed some additional time to explain to us his feelings about the shooting that took place uh, immediately afterwards. He did tell us that uh, he approached the body afterwards and he admitted that he did in fact, as he described it, stand on the arm of Mr. Brooks. Uh, We asked uh, why did he stand on his arm and he said something to the fact that he really didn't know what was going on and he was trying to ensure that Mr. Uh, Brooks did not have a weapon and uh, you know we found that kind of strange uh, because Mr. Brooks had already displayed to them the fact that he did not have a weapon. All right, Ted, now this officer is announced by uh, the DA that he's going to be cooperating and will be testifying against the other officer. Yeah, well, there's some conflicting reports. It seems to be some sort of communication error, uh, Vinny, because during this press conference, Paul Howard went to great lengths to say, this is extraordinary. We have an officer that's going to testify against another officer. We're grateful for that. We think this is maybe the start of something new. Officers should do that. Well, then afterwards, Brosnan's attorney says, now, wait a minute. He's not testifying for anybody right now. He's going to plead not guilty. He didn't do anything wrong. We have to wait to see where this goes because we're getting two clearly different narratives. All right. Now, how about some of the one other huge fact that came out of all of this that I think upset a lot of people and and the D.A. spent a lot of time talking about it was this kick. Describe this kick. And I I know he said he looked at eight different videos. Um, Have you seen the kick in any of the videos that you've had access to? No. Um, and there are eight videos. We have, I think, three. Um, so this is a shot from a cell phone video taken from somebody inside a vehicle. And we don't we have not seen this before. It's a still frame taken from that video. And it appears to show what they say is a kick. And eyewitnesses are also part of the equation here. They've got several eyewitnesses that they have spoken to and All of this, the eight videos, the eyewitnesses, the autopsy results, the um, ballistics evidence, all of that went into the charging decision of Paul Howard. All right. And they have until, what is it, six o'clock tomorrow to turn themselves in, both officers, right? Correct. All right. Ted Rollins, thanks so much. 